Hello ladies and gentlemen, excellent warrior, and welcome back to another video. Now I hope all of you are doing well, because I am as always. And you guys are going to have to excuse me just for a few days, as I've just moved into university and I'm still settling in. Now, in this video, we will be comparing Bombardier to Embraer within Infinite Flight. So I think the first thing we should do is really just compare the amount of aircraft we have. So you can see here we have five Bombardier aircraft and we have four Embraer aircraft. So basically what we learned from this is that there are more already Bombardier aircraft. Now I believe so you can see that the Bombardier CRJs um, came out in 2018 um, in Infinite Flight and the Bombardier Dash 8 came out in 2016. Um, so they're, they're like sort of old and then the Embraer aircraft are from 2012 so many of you know that the E-175 is literally not sure where it is like I'm pretty sure it should be released by now but for some reason it hasn't so the next thing we're going to look at as well is livery so there's quite a few livery options here with the CRJs you can see them all here um, so there's there's a lot of liveries as well on the Dash 8 now the ERJs literally have like four liveries per aircraft it's not looking very good for them I think there's five no that's four there's four yeah they all have four liveries on the aircraft so we're going to go to the oldest aircraft here in the you know the dash 8 from 2016 so this is the oldest bombardier aircraft and the dash 8 is quite a cool aircraft i think in a flight it's one of our only like turboprop aircraft um which consists of larger like longer haul routes that you can do uh, most of our turboprop aircraft in infinite flight are pretty much general aviation um, aircraft like the um, X Cub, which is again a great aircraft in infinite flight. So we're going to check here that the audio is down for us all. So looking at the exterior here, the Dash 8 is actually in very good shape here. Um, I think it's a lovely aircraft as well in infinite flight. It's definitely one of the coolest aircraft we have in the mobile flight simulator, as we can all see here. Which is just chilling in the Flyby livery as well. A uh, big fan of the Flyby livery, which is also confirmed. Um, to be coming in the E-175 rework. Now we go on the interior here, um, there is no interior at all on the Dash 8 unfortunately. Um, the older aircraft in for flight do not really tend to have um, exterior liveries either. So we're going to be looking in the cockpit here now. And you can see here we have the working throttle. You can see the flaps work, so that's pretty cool. There's no spoiler thing that really works in cockpits. And we'll just see if any of the buttons actually work, because I'd imagine what works in here um, will most likely work in the other aircraft. So you can see here um, that they are indeed not actually working, unfortunately. However, our flaps are going up and down. So that's, again, another good thing to look at. Now, let's move over. Let's just have a see what the Embraer aircraft have in for us. So let's go in the E-175. Oh, we're going Flyby as well, actually. Um, conveniently, we'll compare Flyby to Flyby. Um, that is quite funny, to be fair, if you're asking me. Um, so... The Embraer's, what I can tell you about Infant Flight is they're slowly being reworked and it looks like these are the current aircraft being reworked. And you can just tell actually by looking at it, it does look, you know, a little bit oofed. So I think it's the easiest way to talk about the Embraer's in Infinite Flight. They need, they do need full reworks. Like I said, two of them are currently being reworked and I can't tell you much about the other two because I don't fully know yet. But I think the aircraft itself looks really cool. I don't even know what I just like flew into there. Um, so the aircraft on the exterior, again, the liveries look pretty much the same. Um, so I think the Embraer and the Bombardiers have pretty similar um, exterior liveries in infinite flight by the looks of this. Because again, we are in a very old aircraft. Now you can see here, this cockpit is so old that not even the throttle works. You can see here, I'm bringing it up down to 100% and zero. There's literally nothing working there. So we literally have a stale cockpit is what I tend to call it. Um, although I don't think that's really a very technical term for a cockpit in a flight simulator. Um, but yeah, you can see here that the aircraft itself is pretty good again. So we'll go on the interior as well and you'll be able to tell that there is actually no interior on the Embraer aircraft at all. And it's the same for that on all four of the Embraers. So that's pretty cool. Now we're going to the Bombardier aircraft and there is no flyby for us. So we'll take the infant flight livery and we're on the CRJ 700. Now I think the CRJs in infant flight are some really good aircraft. Um, I feel like they're a bit like the A320s and all they really need is a live cockpit added. Um, so you can see here we actually do have a working cockpit. Sort of, um, I don't know where the flap stick is. There it is. Oh my gosh, I did not know the flap thing was a bit weird in this aircraft. But you can see here that that all works. Now I'm pretty sure something moves no 
that's really disappointing. I thought the seatbelt signs, or at least the lights, would have um, flicked. Unless they're down here and I've missed them. No, they definitely aren't. However, do the rudder pedals work as well? Yes, they do. That's good. So the rudder pedals work in most cockpits. I don't think they work in the Embraer cockpits, which we were just looking at. I think the CRJs in general on Infinite Flight are really good aircraft here. And you can see here, we're just bringing the flaps up. And the flaps, again, look very good. Now, one thing which is really cool about this, so I can do the passenger, and this just, this just pretty much opens up for us. So we'll change our camera as well to the other one while that opens up for us. Um, so you can see here, there is an interior from what we can tell. So we'll just get inside. And there we go. The CRJs do indeed have an interior. So Bombardier aircraft, I mean, like, tend to have interiors um, other with, you know, without the Dash 8, of course. Now, I love how cool this little aircraft is. I feel like this is one of the best interiors in Infant Flight because I just think the seats look more comfortable as well and they just look a bit better than the typical blue seats we got in aircraft such as the Boeing 777s um, which I think got a live co uh, got a cabin after the CRJ if I'm not mistaken so that is interesting to see how that works but that's all right so I think with regards to these aircraft just in general I think they could do with just a live cockpit as well um, so I think the Bombardier aircraft are definitely looking like the more superior aircraft um, within infinite flight so they are definitely looking better now we come to the back of the plane and it's sort of just pitch bad but we do have opening cargo doors as well so I suppose that's just a little cargo thing there actually yeah it's just under the wing and I think there's another one yeah so this is where the main cargo area is and it's really not a very big cargo area um, for the amount of seats I don't know how many passengers you can fit on these aircraft uh, 67 I mean for 67 passengers it's actually it's all right it's probably all right to be honest I, I think so potentially who knows um but yeah the CRJ looks very good on that one now we're going to try one of the landing these aircraft and I think the CRJ 900 is similar size to probably the E190 I reckon E195 so we'll do the E195 and we'll do the 900 and we'll just give them a landing capacity and we'll just see what aircraft is easier to land now I know I'm completely excluding the Dash 8 from this, but because it's a turboprop, um, I think it's probably easier that we just keep it this way for our test. So we'll do a quick short final here. And for some reason, that is not what I want it to happen. There we go, right, we're coming up, we're coming up now. There we go, just coming in. Okay, okay, are we going to do it, are we going to do it? Nearly there, nearly there. I feel like, I feel like we're a bit too far gone now. Okay, Okay, that's probably one of the better landings I think I've ever actually had in a CLJ. And you can see the reverse thrust here and the spoilers all coming up as well as we like you know, fall off the runway like we typically do, like a pro pilot. So you can tell here, it looks all right, it looks meh, it's working. So that's, again, they're looking really good. Now we're gonna head into the Embraer E195, I said, and let's, let's go fly B again, because you know, it's a cool I mean, we haven't used Azul before, so we'll, we'll let that download. I think we should use Azul. I don't think I've ever really used it that much, to be honest, especially um, in Infinite Flight. I'm pretty sure we got a big Azul A330. I mean, we just saw it in the loading screen. I think that's Azul. We want short final. And these aircraft, I think, are just a little bit older. Um, with the work, their physics is definitely a little bit worse, but it can sometimes benefit you, especially when you're landing um, in awkward conditions. So, which, okay. Oh, that was not good. We'll try that one more time. Okay, here we come. Just coming in slowly, nice and slowly, and we're coming in too fast now. I'm going to have to put my spoilers on flight quickly. Yeah, that was definitely harder to land. I think we had a tail strike there as well, unfortunately, so that's not looking too good for us. Um, but yeah, so in general, I think personally I'd be swaying towards um, the Bombardier aircraft obviously being better. Um, but keep in mind the E175s, they get reworked very shortly. Um, so you never know. However, if you did enjoy the video, please do make sure you like and subscribe and I hope to see you all in my next video. Good night. Find your way.